If we talk, now 500,000 they go summer house, call them hate speech. But if you are not, my ego don't come. In go touch light every corner, looks and cranny of all these bad, bad people where they spoil our country. <laughs> so my people make me love Every corner. Okay, some people be they hala say they want the power. Chai. Them be promise us say we go get light and power. Nah, nah. Them hustle so they so they they can't get the power. Hmm. But now they know they do anything with the power. Sheer. Every day dollar just they get the higher power. Over naira. See them talk say make we off mind. But then go say my ego don't come. So my people make you loud. Oh, yeah, yeah. No one may person talk. Hmm. Them say that my egun, that man too they talk. He too they talk. Say my egun diary, he they hot like pepper. But every day, then they tip money in buck. One man picking, they the street they hawk. Still them talk say make we no talk. But thank God say my egun don't come. So my people make you laugh. Oh, yeah, yeah. My egun don't come. Oh, yeah, yeah. My people make you shout. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good afternoon to you. Good evening to you from wherever you are watching from. This is Mayagun Live. Share the broadcast, invite your friends and ladies and gentlemen as you are joining this uh, broadcast tonight. I am also on behalf of uh, the Emilokon of Yoruba land, as well as uh, His Excellency, the Eleji of Ogun State, Dakbo Abiodun. I welcome you to this uh, segment. <music> Also, depending from where you are watching from, uh, this is uh, the Eleji of Ogu State and then uh, the Olule, the Olule of Nigeria. You are welcome. Yes, 
Thank you. Yes, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you from wherever you are watching from. Just uh, because, uh, before we uh, get fully into this, I want to tell you tonight, we just need to do some uh, revision, okay? Tonight is just uh, 48 hours, less than 48 hours before the serving of Tifnumbu's breakfast, before the serving of those who are Nigerians and many of them in APC, in Yoruba land, they will all get served. But this Nigeria that has become so problematic enough that the majority are asking that can we just go our separate, I mean, separate ways. The journey started a while back. And most of the time, our problems is that uh, we don't learn from history. Tifnumbu had his chance and he missed it. Now, missing his chance is just pretty much like uh, the history repeating itself. Nigeria is uh, unreal. There are owners of Nigeria. Every once in a year, I love to share this uh, recitation with uh, all of my viewers. Do you want to know historical events uh, that, shaped, um, that shaped the Nigeria that you have uh, today? Do you want to have uh, not just uh, the historical events, but the active players who took different uh, parts in what brought Nigeria to this current state? And why? Your efforts, one Nigeria, one Nigeria, is pretty much like a waste of time. Because at the end of the day, you will never be the first who tried thinking they could actually build something out of uh, a united Nigeria that is never united. So the only difference is that uh, those who have uh, kept the lies for so long, they did a better job, right, than the current handlers who exposed the fraud. But why do you think Nigeria is never going to work? Why do you think we said Nigeria will never work? Of course, there are events, there are actions that shaped and forced us to this uh, one Nigeria. But if you don't learn from that history, you are going to become... Uh, what you're going to repeat uh, the same uh, mistake. And when you repeat the mistake, you are going to get uh, even the worst judgment than what's happened in history. And that is why Tifnumbu and gang should begin to take notice of this. This is not about, uh, well, I don't know about others. I don't, I don't hate him. Okay. I don't, I don't have any business with him. But you know why I speak a lot about all these rogues? It's because, yes, you may be benefiting from them directly or indirectly. I don't. But guess what? There are millions of other people who don't give a damn about them. But you see, their actions, their actions, their inactions affect not just those of you who support or don't support them, or so to say. It affects so many of us who actually don't even live in that place in Nigeria. And that is why when we see them going at it again, it is always normal to raise alarm. Even though we, you, know, you believe that there is little we can do, but things are changing to let you know that uh, once people get to know that uh, there's a lot they can do to change the repetition of this same uh, madness, eh? that means all this nonsense is just a matter of time. Okay? And to keep people in the know and to kill the Stockholm Syndrome in our people, we need to always be revisionists. We need to be revisiting events. In Nigeria, you have been celebrating criminals as heroes. Number one, I as a person, the moment I discovered that the, the labors of our heroes past became nonsense to me because their labor, the labor of your heroes past in Nigeria is exactly the result of your today, what you are living in today. Your heroes past, they did not labor for you to have a better life, okay? To have a better Nigeria. Historically, none of your heroes 
who claim to be national, whatever. What you see, most of the glories that uh, many many of us are living on in Nigeria today are the glories that were recorded during the regional system of government when people were handling their own affairs by themselves, right? Swim or sail. You get what I mean? I mean, I mean, sink or swim. They were doing their own thing at the time. Those were the successes that many many people were referring to today as uh, one Nigeria, whatever. And your heroes passed. There is no Nigeria hero past that actually worked. And I'll tell you tonight, I will read a bit of uh, a piece that is uh, something they call revisionist. Don't let us be revisionist. Let us come together and build together and build in one Nigeria. You are just dumb and you are not the first. Okay? There were those who, if you are a young person today, and you are one of those jumping up and down, talking about uh, uh, well, United Nigeria, and we need to come to, together and fight for our future, and then do status. You are deluded. You are what? You are deluded. Before you, there were those who were, who were once your age. There were those who were, young, who were once uh, young, young people like you. They are the old people you see around today. They told them to work for one Nigeria. Just make sure you work for one Nigeria. Is unity of Nigeria is Nigeria is uh, is is non negotiable. Uh, unity of Nigeria is a task that must be done. All those nonsense, eh? There's nothing. There's nothing you are pushing right now. I've discovered that as a young person in Nigeria today, if you are not pushing for either you going back to what it was, which is to not say uh, this one fraudulent Nigeria, yeah, or break it up and go your separate ways. That is where your future is. But if you think you are a young person, you have this energy, you have this vision, you have this dream. Uh, all these old people have failed us. They have failed us. We need to come together. We should stop dividing ourselves. Some of you don't like me simply because you are deluded to you, telling you what you will come, reality you are going to come back to when you turn old. If you are, if you are lucky enough to live long and you turn old, you will look back and you will what? You will be like, ah, I wish I actually use my energy then never to fight to keep this contraption together but maybe because of what you don't know that is why we have to continue to visit events actors actions what happened in the past that shaped nigeria to what it is today it was never meant to be one nigeria do you understand and that is why i'm going to go back to and it doesn't really matter you don't you don't have to like me listen I have told people many times, I am not here for you to like me, okay? It is just a pretty much like a, a plus that I found so many people who say, oh, I love you, my ego, I like you, I love you, and all of I love that. But you don't hold me that. But you see what I'm telling you? What you make of that, what you use some of this information for, what you do as a follow-up on your own to research and confirm things, and then you come back, it's up to you, whatever you do. But you will never deny this. And when people tell you, um, that one is the past, let us move on. Those are the part of, the, that is part of the deceit. Telling you to move on. There is also something called closure. Closure is for everybody to admit to what happened. And then reach out to those who are the victims of what happened. From all over the place, Right? And then come back to, once, once you, and then you come back to, should we still be together? That is when you can now talk about unity. That's when you can talk about uh, whatever, any other nonsense they are telling you to promote and all of that. Because they are all there just for you to keep the contraption. Only if you know. Only if you know. And that is my job. My job is not for me to come here and make you like me. You don't need to like me. You are wasting your time if you think liking me is a condition that some that you, you are so you, you hold so precious that you don't want to lose, and you are also holding Nigeria. You are deluded. Don't mix them together. The truth and fiction can never be mixed together, and in this case, it is costing us our life. It's costing us our development. It's costing us our growth. Is costing us our humanity. And this cannot continue. They decided to keep history away for a certain reason. Just because those who uh, kept the history away from you, 
they are the villains in the history, but they turned it around to present themselves to you as heroes of uh, Nigeria. And look at it. She now sold the place where people love. If you love a place, if you love something, eh? some of you, you love your phones so much. Eh? Some of you, you love your phones because of how much you got the phones. Some of you, you love your phones because of the data and everything you stored on your phones. It's so precious to you. You can't just be on the, you know, uh, uh, be someone and just, just drop your phone uh, just anyhow. Some of you love so many other things that uh, you care for. But those are just the uh, material things, Abby. Now, let's talk about uh, family. Some of you love your family so much that you don't want anything to happen to them. Now, imagine those who have the opportunity to lead the destiny of uh, millions, I mean, to, 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 yeah, to lead the, the destiny of uh, millions of people, and they modeled everything up, right? They modeled everything up. Then they turned around. They said, you need to give us a salute. We have done our best. We are your heroes. Of course, in this uh, in the history of uh, in the in the in the history of uh, animal kingdom, if all animals if animals are allowed to write their own history, eh, there is never going to be a part that they will leave to glorify the hunter. But you see, animals don't write their own history. Hunters are those who always tell these uh, beautiful stories of how, how gallant, how brave they are in front of uh, wild animals. But they never tell you how they have to be scared for their lives and all of that. That's exactly what Nigeria is. Like an animal kingdom. The hunters are the ones writing your history. But good enough, we have uh, brave minds. People who have uh, sound uh, minds, sound memories, who could put uh, words down for the generation coming so that uh, they will not be misled, even though they will always, uh, you know, if Nigeria continues to exist, they will all continue to be miseducated, they will continue to be misinformed, they will continue to be misled and all of that. But in the midst of all of this, there are brilliant young minds that love to put the record straight. And in this case, uh, Sashi, you do you allow? I know you probably you are watching me right now. We are visiting your we are visiting your work again to educate not just uh, those who witnessed all of this to remind them, but at the same time to educate those who never witnessed this. And somehow, somehow they are wasting their youth, they are wasting their young age to fight for a country that was never put together for them, for their future, for their progress. But pretty much like a slave camp, a contraption. So Sashi, you do you allow? If you are watching us, kudos to you again. And as I take you on this drive, is a reading recitation, so to say. Relax. Get your cup of tea. I'll be reading this event starting from uh, when Nigeria started their nose diving. The actors, the players, most of them you are celebrating, including Obasanjo, including uh, Tifnumbu. Are you ready? Hmm? Are you ready? It's like pretty much like, you know. So we will not uh, talk much about a uh, call. Take a minute, right? Like that video. If this is your first time on my Egon's Diary Political, you can also subscribe or like and follow wherever you are watching from. Okay, just a minute. Like that broadcast. Easy peasy. So you have been celebrating criminals. Well, every time I come out here to tell you that uh, these people are criminals, these guys are criminals, I am saying this from the point of uh, what we know. And you will not have to sugarcoat it. There are many people who love to be politically correct. They said I don't have respect simply because I can't be politically correct. I don't know how to call criminals, Mr. Criminal or uh, Sir Criminal or Chief Criminal, Sir or Ma. I don't. I call it as it is. If you feel offended, you as a person, there is something called libel. There's something called defamation uh, suit. I mean, it, the word is so flat now, like uh, it's a global village that uh, I can guess out. If I say something that uh, you believe that, uh, you know, kind of affects your image 
or uh, in any way defames you. That's what the world does. You don't intimidate people. You don't threaten them. You don't tell them that if I, you know what I mean? That is uh, barbaric and uh, pretty much like a criminal as well. In fact, it is criminal. So if any of those, your criminal leaders in Nigeria feels any kind of uh, defamed and all of that, they can always sue me. But you shouldn't work yourself too much up, okay? Don't get yourself too much. Get education or get, let me put it this way. Get some, uh, uh, I mean, some education, okay? Get a little bit educated. And it's a free, free, free education just to see if you would be able eh, to see what damages they have done. Uh, not just to you, done it to so many of us, but uh, many, many of us are today, yeah? Working it out, digging it out, and at the same time, ensuring that uh, the lies they told our parents, they are never, uh, and the ones they told us, they are never going to pass it on to our own children. So if you are interested, now sit back. Let's read, okay? I'll read enough that uh, I can always intermittently, I can break and just make some uh, few comments about a section, okay? Let's start with this. You see? Sashi, you do your sir. After the 419 gubernatorial and presidential elections last year, this was uh, way back in uh, 2000 and, uh, uh, what do you call 2007 or thereabout, okay? I mean, so 2003, uh, the uh, beginning of the second term of Obasan, just so there's going to be a flashback, then we're going to get back to the real story. Let's read. After the 419 gubernatorial presidential elections last year, and by last year, I mean April 19, Coincidentally, it means advanced fee for a fraud, and that was exactly what the election was. Shiv Bisia Konde, former governor of Oshun State, the man adjudged as one of, if not the best governor of 1999 to 2023, that uh, is not uh, right, but said that his defeat was like uh, a thief coming to rob you of your possession. You are harmless. The only thing you can do is just keep quiet and allow it. I mean, allow it. That also is not uh, completely true because uh, the AP, uh, the AD governors, after their woeful performance in Yoruba land, they ran to Obasanjo, thinking Obasanjo could give them second term. So they endorsed Obasanjo PDP for second term. They made a deal with Obasanjo that uh, they will ask Yoruba to vote for PDP president and vote uh, AD governor. When the Yorubas uh, got to political, I mean, to a polling unit, yeah, Obasanjo, uh, they started voting for PDP for Obasanjo, PDP for governor. That's how they lost. But let's continue. Nigeria in the last 44 years has been stolen by a cabal and turned to their own. Few years, I mean, sorry, these few robbers have created dynasties for themselves and they pass us around, they pass us around. I have to call them owners of Nigeria because that is what I think they are and the rest of us are tenants. Who are these people and why are they owners of Nigeria? They cut across all the geopolitical zones of Nigeria. We have them in the west, north, east, and south, south. Also the middle belt. Our, our living has been subjected to theirs. We live how they want us to live. Do what they want us to do. Sneeze when they ask us to. Hit when, I mean, what they offer us. This is pathetic. But I think we caused it. They are able to do this to us because we allow them to have access to wealth while we remain complacent. We hail them, worship them, sing their praises, kill ourselves because of them, fight each other for them to live. They enjoy seeing us dying, suffering, queuing at the gas stations, running after commuter buses, begging for crumbs from their table, even when it demands that we struggle with their dogs to eat it, to get it. We live in the midst of plenty. We are poor. Many of our children abandoned their school for embassies because they need visa to go and be slaves in another man's country. They succeeded in driving our good brains out so that they will turn our land to a jungle. Nothing works except what they want to make work. They control everything, including the air we breathe. While we pay, we pay the NEPA bill and don't enjoy the power, 
they don't yet, I mean, they don't yet never experience or they don't ever experience power failure. We don't have good water to drink. They waste the ones they have. They make the refineries unworkable and import petroleum products for us with the money going back to their different buses from their refineries outside the country. Many of them have been in the system since the birth of an independent Nigeria, and they are still there. Some are replacing themselves with their sons and daughters, and we fold our hands, watching helplessly. They kill and get away with it. Maim, maim, and nothing happens. They call the shots in all facets of our lives. They tell us who is going to be our next president and where he will come from. The right constitution for us, a constitution that has, that has the hand of Esau and the voice of Jacob. A constitution unitary in all its features, but called federal. They are not faceless. They are people we see daily, meet daily, and sing their praises. Their empire is big. They have the media, banks, police, military, state security, and above all, government. One edition of, publica of this publication cannot talk about these people, but it has taken me time to out with this, to come out with this, and I intend to write a book on these owners of Nigeria. Sashi Yo Duyela has been uh, 18 years since you wrote this masterpiece. We are still waiting for that particular book, The Owners of Nigeria. I would love to read that to my friends here. Yeah. Now let's continue. Though I was born six years after the so-called independence, I think as a history student, I'm a student, both at my elementary and high school, I learned about Nigerian history. And now as an adult, I can talk of what happened since independent to date. At a forum in New York on the 6th, uh, I mean, sorry, in uh, June 2012, I mean June 12, 2012, I mean, sorry, in Ju on June 12, uh, that was uh, that time anyway, pretty much not detailed. So I maintained a position that we only have one republic in Nigeria because we have only, we have only been ruled by one set of rulers on that same system. That is cyclic. What I mean is that since 1960, we have been going around the vicious circle on how to, I mean, or, I mean, on a vicious circle, or how do you explain the presence of Alaji Adamusi Roma, a graduate of history from the University of Ibadan, who was appointed a central bank governor and has been featuring in one government or the other, be it military or civilian, up to 2003. Even when he was sick, Oba Sanjo kept his portfolio or that of Asiodu Philip. Let me start with the present president of Nigeria. That was uh, Oba Sanjo back then, the commander-in-chief of armed forces and chairman of the Owu Kingmakers. Olusha Gumathi Waremu Okikiola Oba Sanjo became a household name in 1976 after the coup that killed Muritala Muhammad. Muhammad on the fateful day of February 13, 1976. I was in primary six then. As we were made to know, Oba Sanjo had wanted to turn down the offer of ruling Nigeria, but had to accept at gunpoint, which is a lie. The fab, the fabu sounds ridiculous, but I mean, because under no circumstance will a brave man compromise his principle for anything. A soldier, as we, were, as we are made to know, do not fear death. They know this from their day, or let me say from their day one in the military. Let us leave that aside. He ruled Nigeria for three years with iron hand. It was in his tenure that Akintunde Ojo, who incidentally was, a, was his godson, killed at University of Lagos in 1978. Professor Adi Ajayi, then Vice Chancellor of uh, University of Lagos, lost his job because he attended Akintude Ojo's burial. Ebenezer Babatokwe, 
Olauni and many others lost their jobs as lecturers in various institutions over the students' unrest then. He launched Operation Feed the Nation, OFN, then called Operation Feed the Nation. Little did we know that it was a sample of what we were to see later as Obasanjo Farms, Nigeria, OFN. While Operation Feed the Nation failed, Obasanjo Farms, Nigeria did not. It has branches in Ota, Ibuora, Owiwi, and some other places I cannot remember now. He added a secondary school to the farm project, Bell School, one of the most expensive high schools in Nigeria. Highland is planning to establish a university, he already did. I wonder what knowledge the university will impact on its students. A president that does not have regards for education, who kept university students at home for over six months, now planning to establish a university. We need to check on his Bell's school to know the minimum wage there first. In his books, or let me see, in his books, one and two, my command and not my will, he painted himself as the hero of the civil war. He stated that what some people struggle all their life to get, they didn't. I mean, he didn't. He got it without sweat. He also confirmed that he voted for NPN in the 1979 elections when he was the head of state. One of the Yoruba senior office officers had gone to him to discuss the need to restructure the military to favor all ethnic nationality. He called Yaradua and Danjuma to the meeting and asked this man to repeat it. The officer, a major general, repeated it. He left, but heard of his retirement on the radio on his way home. Because he advised Doba Sanjo to restructure the Nigeria security, Nigeria military, to have all the ethnic nationalities in Nigeria represented and gazette it so that nobody would change that. Oba Sanjo called Dan Juma. And the man, Brigadier General, who made that suggestion, lost his job and got retired immediately. Oba Sanjo, a Yoruba man. I hope you are paying attention, right? Hmm? Why was he chosen as head of state in 1976? Not because he was the next to Muritala. No. Babangida gave the reason in 1996 or 1997. When Obasanjo was jailed for the 1995 Phantom Coup. Phantom Coup. Obasanjo, according to Babangida, Obasanjo is a conformist. They see him as someone who can sell his own brother for a plate of porridge. He did in 1979. He did in 1993. He did in 1998, 2001, 2003, and 2004. He did again after this in 2007, in 2015, in 2019. Because Obasan Joy is not anybody's hero. He is a conformist and he is part of them. I know some people know. If you are a young uh, man or a young person watching me right now, I think it's time for you to know as well. In 1979, it was the rigging. I mean, he saw the rigging and closed his eyes. Awolowo lost not at the pole, but at the desire of Obasanjo and those who put him there. In 1993, he sold out and supported the annulment of June 12, 1993 election. We all remember that there was a moment. He said, then on good governance, Buhari and Idiagbon were members. They pulled out after seeing that Ob Obasanjo supported the annulment and was also talking of new elections and not the, the annulment of the election. 
This issue caused a rift between him and his childhood friend, Honor Lapo Sholeye, a sociology lecturer at the University of Ibadan, who served as Buhari's finance minister. We still remember the 53 suitcases scandal. Sholeye, on hearing of the, of the imminent annulment, disagreed with Obasanjo. The argument heated up that Sholeye walked or stormed out. He got to his, uh, uh, stormed out, uh, well, whatever that is uh, correct. Well, he stormed out of Obasanjo's, uh, Obasanjo's house, according to the, the statement, right? In 1998, Abiola was killed for him to become president. In 2001, December 23rd, Ajibola Ige was killed. Ige until his death, was the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of, the, of Nigeria. And it is, sad, it is sad that he did not get justice. His killers is not at the National Assembly, so his killers are not at the National Assembly making laws. In fact, he won his election while in, while in jail, unprecedented. Um, it is only in Nigeria, giant of Africa, under Obasan Joso, in the biggest political party in Africa then, PDP, a murder suspect will be nominated for a position as I as Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and, in, um, and the Un-Independent Electoral Commission will clear him. According to Audi Ogwe, he warned them against it. It is sad. And this is what we call democracy. Now, his recent shameful act at Owu has uh, shown that a man is on, I mean, the man is on the journey of uh, self-destruction uh, way back. Tunde Bakari came up to speak that Obasanjo was not God sent. He was condemned, but I told people then that they should wait. That God time is not, uh, it's not our time. It was too early to write off Bakari. I think a lot of people will not uh, see reason in Bakari's prophecy. Long shot, Bakari himself has uh, eventually unraveled. Now, they cannot see all that. Well, let's go to, uh, I actually want to jump up Basanjo for now. Let's go to uh, Babangida. Now, the president of Nigeria doubled himself as the head of uh, kingmakers in his own uh, town. That's Obasanjo. So, Ibrahim Badamosi Badangida, Babangida, after the coup that brought in Aguyi Rossi in 1966, a group of uh, young northern military officers decided to embark on ethnic cleansing because they believe the earlier coup was Igbo concentrated. As a result, they want to avenge the killing of their ancestors. This led to the killings of Aguyi and Rossi in Ibadan and Adekunle Fajuyi, who was the governor of the western region and host of Aguyi and Rossi was killed with him. This brought in 29-year-old Yakubu Gowan as head of state. But by that time, Gowan was a bachelor. One of the members of the group is Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida, who, 19 years later, became the first military president of Nigeria. Before 1983, not much was known by Nigerian public about Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida, even in 1993, when he was uh, made the chief of army staff, many people still don't, I mean, still don't know, not many people still know him. He seemed like uh, an odd underdog and uh, new face, but this is not true. Even Buhari and Edi Agbon did not know much about him. He played a vital role in the coup that toppled Shagari's government. This he did with the help of his man, who was then the director of military intelligence, Aliyu Muhammad Guzo. Babangida is an adroit politician. He knows his onion. He knows what he wants and how to get it. He pretends to be used when in actual fact he is using his user. It was not in the plan to make Babangida the chief of army staff after toppling Shagari. The position was for Bako, who was to deliver Shagari. But because Babangida needed the position, for his eventual takeover of government from Buhari, 
He maneuvered and got it. How did he get it? What did he do to, to displace Baku? All this in the next uh, phase. So if you have been watching so far, it is called the derivation of how Nigeria got to where we are today. The villains the, that are celebrated as, as heroes, the criminals that you are celebrated that you are celebrating as uh, you know your leaders. How did they shape the Nigeria to what it is today, economically, religiously, politically, and every other way? And why you should never continue to be part of those that will keep that legacy. You can trash it. You can chart a new course. And since uh, you've managed to be with me to this point, I'm going to advise that uh, share this uh, broadcast. Take a moment and like uh, the broadcast. My friends on YouTube are currently, uh, you know, well, we always have the number, but it's just that uh, you never take your time to drop uh, the offering. So take a moment, like the video, and I will be back in a minute for the part two. Continuation, call it, as Yorubas. Uh, I will be back. Malamala. Moboju, aye, aye, shamalamala. Momaboju, oru, kumbulo, shubole. Momaboju, oru, kumbulo, shubole. Oni, ere, yo. Kini desi, yoruba, omo, araye. Kini shelesi, yoruba, omo, duwa, o. Ye, 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 ye. Awa, ma, she, mu, oro, lambe. Yoruba, she, ra, wani, zori, yo, wo. Jira <laughs> Yo, you are no you are Ti ko bogun odun leyin okunkun biribiri mole aton o e je ka ko lo dumare ka ko balu aye kayi wa le dun igbeyin igbeyin lalayo ile mo pe yo o thank you very much yes uh yeah if you have uh, managed to share the broadcast so far i'm going to say thank you to you okay uh if you haven't maybe you should uh, if you have a really subscribed as well, you should. Okay, it is free. If you even if you don't like my ego and you feel like, uh, but you want to probably take uh, me to task on whatever I do on my ego's diary political, you can only do that if you are following my ego. Yeah, I mean, it's up to you. But to the uh, to the brethren in the temple of truth, I hope you have taken your nice time. Take a moment, okay? Like that video. Okay, before we continue. And let's go to the next part. Because as I'm talking to you right now, before I go to the next part, yeah, I am also going to read to you what uh, is uh, called the final communique. Uh, also, credit of this also goes uh, to Dawudu.com, the publisher for uh, Sashi Yi Oduyela. It is called the final Aburi uh, communique. Many, many of you have been hearing about Aburi Accord, Aburi Accord. That was the accord that uh, Guwon agreed to so that uh, that would bring uh, peace and that uh, the Biafrans, they can continue to handle their own affair and there will be no need for killing. There will be no need for war. But uh, the criminals in Nigeria, when they got back home, they felt like they've lost power. They've lost ground. They decided to change that and they killed uh, over 5 million Biafrans just to keep Nigeria together for all of us to come and witness what we are seeing today. Because the question you ask yourself is that uh, whatever it was back then, you know, that uh, go on and others decided to kill uh, 5 million Biafrans to keep Nigeria one. 
Shena, the reason we then keep Nigeria one for be this. For all of us to come and end up in the hands of uh, Fulani terrorists, kidnappers, and the rest of them, and only for them to tell us that, uh, you know, we, there's nothing we can do about it. Is that the reason why they are keeping Nigeria one? That they killed over 5 million? Well, over 8 million people died. So unfortunate uh, that uh, they managed to, to bury that uh, grievous, that, that heinous uh, crime, that they felt like uh, no winner, no vanquish resolved it. But this is uh, a part uh, of the final Aburi Accord. So you can know now what was in that communique, okay, that they said could bring peace. There was be no need for war. I'll share it on my screen. Look at it. So I'll read that out as well. And it says that uh, the Supreme Military Council of Nigeria resumed its meeting in Ghana on the 5th of January and continued and concluded discussion of the remaining subjects on the agenda. The council reached agreement on all the items. On the powers and functions of the federal military government, the council reaffirmed its belief in workability of existing institutions subject to necessary safeguards. Other matters on which agreements were reached included the, I mean, they included, uh, they included the following. Reorganization, administration, and control of the army appointments and promotions to the senior ranks in the armed forces the police, diplomatic and consular services, as well as uh, appointments to super scale posts in federal civil service and the equivalent posts in the federal uh, statutory corporations. On the questions of displaced persons, the Supreme Military Council agreed to set up a committee to look into the problems of rehabilitation and recovery of property. In this connection, the military governor of East assured the council that the order that rehabilitation non-Easterners should leave Eastern region would be reviewed with a view to its being, it, I mean, it's uh, being lifted as soon as uh, practicable. Because at that, around that time, the, there were declarations that uh, the Igbos must leave the North. So the Igbos have to, uh, Ojuku was like, uh, if you are an Igbo man, you need to return back uh, to the East. And then the uh, same way, the people from the north said, if you are a northerner, you need to leave the east. This was before the war, before Ojuku went to Nigeria and declare war. Okay. I'm sorry, before rather, before uh, Gowon went to Nigeria and declare war on the Igbo. So I retracted that, by the way. That's a slip. So, so they were like, okay, people who have been displaced with detention. Meanwhile, before this time, they have already started killing, slaughtering in large mass the Igbos in Kano, in Shokoto, in northern Nigeria. So the tension was rising. That's why they took the meeting to Aburi in Ghana. Let me continue, sorry. So agreement was also reached that the staff and employees of governments and statutory corporations who have had to leave their posts as a result of recent disturbances in the country should continue to be paid their full salaries up to the end of 31st of March, 1967 provided they have not found alternative employment. This is a process of, if you want to go back to the north, stay in the north. If you are working in the eastern Nigeria as a Nigerian, and now you have to go back to where you come from, this is the process of, uh, the process of gradually dividing Nigeria. But continue, let's continue reading. You know. The council agreed that uh, the ad hoc uh, committee on the constitution future of the country should be resumed as soon as practicable and that the unanimous recommendations of the committee is September 1966, sorry, 1966, will be considered by the Supreme Military Council at a later meeting. The council unanimously agreed that future meetings of the council should be held in Nigeria at a venue to be announced later. The entire members of the Supreme Military Council expressed profound regrets for the bloodshed which has engulfed the country in the past year and a vow to do all in, on, all in their power to ensure there is no recurrence of the unhappy situation. The members of the Supreme Military Council place a record, I mean, sorry, place on record their profound appreciation and gratitude for the constructive, constructive initiative and assistance rendered by the chairman of the National Liberation Council, the government and people of Ghana. Statement by the Supreme, Supreme Council on the reorganization of the army and the approval of senior appointments and its declaration on the use of force. So one, the Supreme Military Council now meeting in Ghana has agreed on the following reorganization of the army. In quote to Nigerian army, they have to reorganize the constitution, reorganize the army, 
and they have to let the Biafrans have their own share enough until the process of them exiting Nigeria can be concluded. Though, if nobody truncated that in 1967, by now maybe Biafra would have celebrated their 40 years or 20 years or 30 years independence, like all these uh, other countries you have in Europe today. That process was so easier, yeah, there would have been no bloodshed, no reason to kill anybody at all. And it was fine. Some of you have the video of the Aburi meeting. Ojuku, go on. They were sharing drink. They were toasting. Everything was fine. Until they got back to Nigeria. And the jihadists felt like, go on, you the craze. Are you mad? What did you just sign? What did you agree to? Tear it. The Supreme Military Council now meeting in Ghana has agreed on the following reorganization of the army. The army is to be governed by the Supreme Military Council, the chairman of which will be known as Commander-in-Chief and head of the federal military government. There will be a military headquarters on which the regions, in quote, look, listen to that, though, the regions will be equally represented and which will be headed by a chief of staff. In each region, there shall be an area command under the charge of an area commander and corresponding with the existing regions. Region, region, region. Pay attention to that. Aburi Accord. All matters of policy, including appointments and promotions of person in executive posts in the armed forces and police shall be dealt with by the Supreme Military Council. Sorry, one second. It's like uh, we have a guest of this uh, uh, mad uh, porn uh, site. Give me a second. Just a moment. Sorry. We, sorry about that break anyway. I'm just trying to deal with something. So many, many of you have been hearing about Aburi Accord, Aburi Accord. Some of you don't even know the content. Some of you know the, you rem, some of you don't even remember anymore. You are old enough now. A lot of things have happened that today. Now, now the Biafran, Kossam, the, now the Biafran, well, is it not because the, the, the Biafrans want to break away? Is it not because Biafra, the propaganda that they are, they have to follow that led to the death of over 8 million people, including 5 million uh, Biafrans. This is the beginning. This was how it all started. It was a violation of a gentleman or gentleman agreement. Gentleman agreement. Oh. That was what led to the killings. And then they forced everybody to stay together. And for what? Just to keep one Nigeria. For us to be getting killed as we are being killed today. If you see any unity beggar on the platform right now, don't fight them. I have told you. We will educate them. Yeah? One by one. Eh, they will become, they will be, they will be kind of uh, healed from the insanity that Nigeria has sort of uh, engraved in them. Do you understand? Don't fight them. Let them abuse me. Let them, at least these are events. I didn't write them. I wasn't alive. I mean, I wasn't there in 1967. But today, because of the violation of that agreement, millions of people were killed and millions of people have also been killed after that. And there, hundreds of thousands are being killed yearly now. So do you see why some of us are no longer amused? Let's continue. Regions, regions, regions. All matters of policy, including appointment and promotions of persons in executive posts, armed forces, blah, blah, blah. During the period of military government, military governors will have control over their area commands in matters of internal security. Which means you don't uh, say somebody is uh, from northern Nigeria to go and head the people of uh, Yoruba land so that uh, he can be reporting back to his uh, appointee from Abuja. All of that came to play after the Biafra uh, genocide. Internal security was supposed to be handled by the people from each region, region, and not just that. Oh, if you are the command, if you are uh, the back there, they said if you are the governor of the region, you control the security, the armed forces, everything within your region. Are you controller? That was the agreement. Oh, 
the following appointment must be approved by the Supreme Military Council, Military, uh, Council Diplomatic and Consular Post, Senior Post in the Armed Forces and Police, Super Scale Federal Civil Service and Federal Corporation Post. Any decision affecting the whole country must be determined by the Supreme Military Council. Where a meeting is not possible, such a matter must be referred to military governors for comment and, and concurrence. And two, we... We, the members of the Supreme Military Council of Nigeria, meeting at Accra on the fourth day of January 1967, hereby solemnly and unequivocably declare that we denounce the use of force as a means of settling the present crisis in Nigeria and hold ourselves in honor, bound by this declaration, reaffirm our faith in discussions and negotiations as the only peaceful way of resolving the Nigerian crisis. Again, we, the members of the Supreme Military Council of Nigeria, meeting at Accra, Ghana, on the fourth day of January 1967, hereby solemnly and unequivocably declare that we will renounce the use of force as a means of settling the present crisis in Nigeria and hold ourselves in honor bound by this declaration, they were never held honor bound, right? Said, reaffirm our faith in discussion and negotiation, discussion and negotiation as the only peaceful way of resolving the Nigerian crisis. Agree to exchange information on the quantity of arms and ammunition in each unit of the army in each region and also on the quantity of new arms and ammunition in stock. Guess what? Back then, we were all there protecting ourselves. The Yoruba as a region, we could stand and defend ourselves. The Igbos as a region, they could stand and defend themselves. The North as a region, they could stand and defend themselves. Then politics happened. Military forced uh, the hands of everybody, and we had a war that saw the death of over over 8 million people. We haven't recovered. I will take another break. Then we'll continue on the owners of Nigeria. If you haven't really shared this broadcast, sir, and you are still here with us, it seems that you are enjoying it too. You are learning, Abi. Share this broadcast. We'll continue in a minute or two. Oh, do I call. Oh, So today, an average uh, Biafran will tell you that uh, Fulanese don't honor agreement. No, 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 no. They've learned it from history. And when you see a normal, when you see an average Biafran today, you are going to call them people who hate Nigeria, people who are this and that, because you don't know the history, how they come by, how they have come to the stage where they don't trust anybody. Do you understand that? All of these are coming from the background of what Nigeria did. A simple gentleman agreement that shouldn't cause any wahala cost Nigeria the lives of uh, innocent people. Eight million of them. Over eight million. 
Yoruba has died. Aousa died. Ofulani died. Everybody died in that war. It's not just the Biafran. So because Biafran didn't go down just like that. Too. No, 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 no. They fought. They held Nigeria for three years. Until some extra external forces, right, helped Nigeria to further strangle and ostracize, as in, you know, isolate them. They didn't, they are not like, it wasn't like uh, all this, uh, you know, some of you don't have a clue about that. Eastern region, they have their own military base. They have their own army, soldiers, everything there. Yoruba land, we had our own military base. Yes, we did. We have. We had that. That is why when they now did their one Nigeria, you know what they did there? Eh? They moved all the weapons from all the regions after the war. They moved them to northern Nigeria. That's why to this day, you can only find Nigeria weapons in Yoruba land and in northern Nigeria. Now you can actually only find shells of them in Yoruba land today because they don't trust us anymore as well. It was after the war because everybody could fight themselves. All this nonsense, all these uh, beggars that you call leaders today, all these ass leakers that you call leaders today, Tifnubu and Co., Lily Livard, Lily Livard, the uh, opportunists that you call leaders today, they cannot control a single Megadi in this current Nigeria. Back then, before the Owala, Yorubas have their defense. Igbos have their defense. And uh, the Northerner. And immediately after that, the likes of Obasanjo and Co. They help them to move and mop up all those weapons. And they move them to, they call them, move them to safety. That's what makes Northern Nigeria look like they are so powerful today. But guess what? They are opening those armory now. They are opening them for terrorists to come and grab all those weapons and fight Nigeria. So the, all these things didn't happen by coincidence. But let us continue. The owners of Nigeria. The re the reading. Under Alaji Shewu Shagari, the Chadian gender means invaded Borono states, and the government ordered the deployment of troops from 3rd Armored Division of the Nigerian Army to the borders in the Northeast. This action did not last long as smugglers in the Shagari's government mounted pressure on him to order the withdrawal of the troops because the presence of the soldiers was preventing them from their smuggling. Alaji Shewu Shagari ordered the withdrawal of the troops, but the general officer commanding the 3rd Armored Division of the Nigerian Army, based in Jos, knew it was not a wise decision to take. He declined until it was ordered by the chief of army staff, then General Wushishi, the GOC, uh, the GOC reluctantly withdrew his men, and that marked the beginning of the end of Alaji Shewu Shagari's government. This man was General Buhari, that's the current Bokowari. The support of all officers was needed, and this group led by Buhari set out to get as many people as they could to their side. There was a man they needed, and someone was sent to him. Domkat Bali was the man, and the man was uh, sorry. The man who went to discuss the coup possibly was Ibrahim Adamosi Babangida. Bali had told Babangida to still give the politicians time to sort themselves out, but after the 1983 election, Buhari met with Bali on the latest way to Lantern to raise the issue of the coup again. It was then, it, was, it became clear to Bali that Babangida was just delivering message. Bali, of course, consented, and a few days later, they struck. One thing that was not clear to Buhari and others was that there was another coup within their own coup. The position of chief of army staff was for Bako, the man who was to deliver Shagari, but Babangida was also interested in that same position. He knew why he wanted it. It was to position himself for, F for eventual takeover from Buhari. All the general officers commanding report to the chief of army staff. That was the chain of command before 1985. They do not report to the head of state or president directly. And to succeed in any coup, you need these GOCs since they are in direct contact with the soldiers and whatever may be 
may be needed for the coup in terms of troops, weapons, and ammunition. To displace Baku, a plan was hatched to bring someone in to coordinate the coup in Abuja. The man, now a senator, was recalled from Arari, Zimbabwe, where he was serving. Though he was to coordinate the coup in Abuja, his actual mission was to stop Baku. Eventually, Bako died in the coup, allegedly shot from the back. But no one ever queried that. That he was shot from the back showed clearly that he did not die during the gun battle, but was killed. It was a case of a coup within a coup. At the early stage of the coup planning, Ibrahim Babangida was sent to General Domkat Bali to fill the latest pause. Bali advised him to give the civilian time to sort themselves out. To Bali, it was Babangida who was planning the coup. But it's down on him that Babangida was not the man behind the coup, but an errand boy. He was on his way to Langtang and he stopped over to say aye to GOC 3rd Armand Division, Joss. Buhari was the GOC. And it was then that Bali, Buhari now asked Bali again if it was time to strike. This is about the end of 1983, and Bali said yes. They struck and Shagari was removed. Bali was in that government. Though he was the most senior officer, Babangida was made the chief of army staff. So many people who said that Buhari didn't know about the coup. Now, historically, an historical document, facts, prove that, uh, in fact, it was a revenge because uh, Shagari withdrew uh, a sort of uh, his own uh, team, soldiers from the border, from the border of Nigeria. And that made Bokwari felt like, instead of a soldier, loyal to his commander in chief, the president, he felt that uh, no, that person can no longer be the president of the country. And that was an elected president, by the way, not a military a democratically elected president of Nigeria who gave an order that Buhari was not in tune and in, 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 in agreement with, he decided to end democracy for that. But the people who have been trying to, including Tifnumbu, who have been trying to rewrite the history or who rewrote the history to make Bokwari look like uh, somebody who actually was a good part of uh, whatever. It's not. But you are still going to know more about Buhari in this... Uh, in this uh, Visitation. Hmm? He was the one who, who, who mobilized the coup. Boba Bangida, an errand boy, also wanted power. Bokwari wanted power. So he could use Bokwari to gain power. And that's exactly what happened. And let me tell you something. Every time I look at uh, Tifnumbu and all his uh, kamakazi uh, move, eh, thinking he's smart. He is dealing with people who actually was they are smarter than him. They are smarter than many, many of you with your useless degree and certificate in southern Nigeria. These are guys who have schemed about power. When it was, if you were caught, you will be executed. Listen, oh, today in politics, eh, you can plan a coup in politics to outsmart your master. If you were caught, if you fail. You will face a political death. They won't kill you. So you, all of you, these poli political idiots and political criminals, and then uh, they would be political criminals. You are dealing with these guys who planned to take over government during the time that uh, if you were caught, they are going. They will execute you. They will shoot you and kill you. And they succeeded. They were not caught, but you dumbos, you think you are smart. Eh? Buhari is an idiot. He's a mumu. Buhari is just a mumu. It's just Buhari. Tinumbu that came, gave him this. If not because if Nubu make him a, a president. Because of all the useless grammar that all of us are speaking. Grammar. Bra, 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 bra. These are guys who have risked it all. Put their life on the line. Because it was like uh, if you are caught, you are dead. No, you are going to be killed. But if you, are, if you win, you are going to win big. So if you think reading and speaking grammar makes you smart, 
ask yourself how come that you have all of your leaders, all of them, pata pata, they have remained suji of the people you claim to be dumb. And to this day, now the dumb people, they, they are not smart. They are not this, you know what I mean? This northern Nigeria, we, they are not, it's this, uh, you have no idea about these guys. Their own certificate, PhD, from power play, eh? They know they teach them for your school. Trust me. But let us continue. Some of Babangida seniors were forced to retire because they could not stand them being their chief. But they paid dearly for it. As chief of army staff, he was able to win some of the GOCs. You know, they've made their Buhari president now. So he's the chief of staff. Now he's going to be meeting all the GOCs, the machinery, the, 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 the logistic to plan a successful coup. Nobody will catch you anymore. So this is it. Now he went to work. The position that never existed in the history, angle for this, he said, as she, I mean, I said, as chief of army staff, he was able to win some of the GOCs. Abacha was the GOC, second mechanized division, Ibadan. Then, let me quickly touch that. You see, Abacha being the GOC, general officer commanding in Ibadan, all of this started happening, you know, after the after go one waged war against Biafrans, and they now forced this no winner, no vanquish. So, it, moment after that, they started appointing Fulani, Awusa, as well as uh, Yoruba, Igbo, Stujis in the military. They started appointing them to go and add different political, I mean, different uh, military positions across Nigeria to monitor. You know, if anybody, if any community won't try to show anything, they will bring soldiers out. They will shoot and kill all of them. And say, behave yourself. Oh. You know, Nigeria fought war. Oh. All of you should not bring any madness here. Don't protest. Oh. Don't try anything. Oh. Do you want to divide Nigeria? So that was when the fear of, if you say, you want to complain about anything in Nigeria, eh? the fear that eh, they will say, hey, you better don't let them say you want to divide Nigeria. They are going to kill you. The owner of Nigeria, that was the birth, the beginning of the fear. That was the beginning when the Aousa Fulani, they will begin to head our military posts. They will begin to head our police, uh, head of our police commissioners and all of them in Yoruba land, in Nigbo land. After the war, that was when it all started. It was never like that. Are you with me? The commander of military in Yoruba, I mean, the Nigerian military base in Yoruba land, they have always been Yorubas. Go and read the history. The commanding officers for all the military posts in Igbo land before the war, they have always been the Igbos. Because it has to be like that. Then Abacha became commanding officer in Yoruba land. In Ibadan. If Yorubas try anything, go and be their friend. Go and be anything. If they are trying anything, eh, just arrest them or kill them. Because they are trying to cause trouble in Nigeria. So soldiers will now say, oh, are you trying to cause problem? Oh, are you trying to cause problem? Nigerian soldiers, hey, you are trying to cause problem. So all these boys who are trying to cause problem, kill them. That's how, that is how military brutality became our part and parcel. That is why soldiers or police officers who have nothing to do with most of the communities they post them to, eh? That is why they commit all the crimes that spread the fear and made us this fearful of these rogues and criminals. But we are going to override, I mean, we are going to eventually overcome our fear as many, many of us are already doing. So thank you very much, uh, by the way, uh, for, uh, uh, you know, to every one of you who have managed to drop your offering. So on my ego's diary political, the offering is uh, your like. You need to like uh, the broadcast, okay? You take a moment, you like it. It shows that you are here. You are watching and you are not a robot. Somebody told me, somebody said, my ego, it's like something is wrong. It's like, they are, number one, we know they are limiting your views on Facebook. Number two, we also see that they don't allow us to really share your broadcast on Facebook. But it's like on YouTube as well, they stop all the likes. When people drop their likes, right, it doesn't count. It doesn't show up. I said, no, 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 no. People people watch Mayegun on their TV. Most of the time, they just don't have the time to go and like and all of that, okay? But if you are typing and commenting, 
right? If you are commenting, it means that uh, you have a device, holding a device. You can like the video to show that you are here. We are nearly 2,000 of us on YouTube. And uh, the Facebook right now, we have uh, nearly, I mean, we have over 1,000 of us on Facebook right now from uh, both Facebook, right? But yet, we don't have really much of you engaging it or sharing it or inviting others to it. It is, uh, you know, tonight is not me, you know, fighting them now. Tomorrow, now the eve of uh, the Tifnumbu's call loose disgrace. We will do that one tomorrow. Tonight is for lecture. Lecture to, remi to, re to remind all of you that you see all these things happening. They are not just coincidence. They are not. And you cannot ignore them and begin to think you want to fix the call. What do you want to fix it? Something where you know get, you are not a stakeholder. You are nothing there. You, the owners of Nigeria, they shape it and they make you live through the condition. So share the broadcast. Like the video. Come on. Like it. Uh, 2,000 people on YouTube. Nearly 2,000. And only 900 of us have dropped, their, dropped our offerings. That is really not good. So do that. Let's do that. But anyway, I'll continue because I am not... Uh, initially, I was going to take calls. But no, I'm going to read all night. Okay? I'm going to read all night. And then uh, I will continue again uh, some other time. But for tonight, again, let's continue. So, Babangida and Asabasha was the GOC in Ibadan. He used the office judiciously. But before the Buhari coup, when Shagari took over, Babangida and some northern officers had advised against leaving Alani Akeni Ade as chief of army staff to them. It was not safe for Shagari, the grade two teacher and Nigeria's first selected executive president, knew nothing. He was advised to ease out Akeni Ade. How did they achieve this? See, the position that never existed in the history of the Nigerian army was created. And after their aim was achieved, it was scrapped. Shagari asked Akeni Ade to write a blueprint on duties of a chief of defense staff. A new position to be created. The unsuspecting Akeni Ade did not know he was preparing his own new office. <laughs> he was later made the chief of defense staff with Akeni Ade's promotion to redundancy. General Jalo, now late, became the chief of army staff. Something happened that never happened in the history of the Nigerian army and did not happen thereafter. The post of a deputy chief of army staff was created and General Uchichi was appointed as the deputy chief of army staff. Babangida, right? Babangida led the, the group of those who contrived the concept of the D Coas, deputy chief of army staff. Having been isolated, Lieutenant General Alani Akeni Ade retired, and Jalo was made the chief of defense staff, while Ushishi became the chief of army staff. <laughs> Excuse me. And the position of the, the deputy chief of army staff was scrapped because Akeni Ade was the reason they created all those bogus positions anyway. Since he retired and he's already his doubt, then they replaced the, they replaced him. With the real people that will do the job for the later assignment. So, ironically, the same Babangida who skimmed out Akeni Ade now invited him back to serve in his government. And surprisingly, Akeni Ade accepted. When Buhari took over power at gunpoint, it was their thinking that Nigerians need a change of attitude. War against indiscipline, indiscipline was launched. We were to queue at bus stops, public places. It became an offense to litter, urinate in the public. A day was set aside monthly for environmental sanitation. Buari Idiagbon thought of addressing the problem of inflation created by Shagari and his army of politicians. This they did by changing the currency. And those who have stolen money, could not bring them out. Many of them at the time were in detention. They lost it all. But with a government getting, with a government, getting Nigeria out of external debt, changing the psyche of Nigerians, 
and raising hope of a better and disciplined citizenry, what could bring about his ouster? Babangida, Abacha, Joshua Dongoyaro, Abubakar Rumar, Abdul Mumini, Tanko Ayuba, Tunde Ogbea, David Mark, Lawan Guadabe, and others that I cannot remember have answers to these questions. In 1985 August, Babangida, using the crop of mid reef officers, struck and took over power from Buhari. Why they struck is still sketchy, but we know some of those who supported the takeover then. One prominent name and personality was late Chief MKO Abiola. He supported the coup morally and financially, and he benefited immensely from it. Colonel Abubakar Umar, Abdul Mumini, Guadabe were among the midriff officers used. They were majors. There was Tunde Ogbeha and David Mark, now senators then. They played prominent roles in the hosta, ouster of February's government, the best military government so far in the history of Nigeria, which is a lie. This is subject, well, I love that. This is subject uh, to debate and it is open. So I agree, I disagree with the writer because it is a lie. Bokwari's government led Nigeria into recession, devalued Nigerian currency, just like he's doing right now. He shut down the border. And at the same time, he went after, he blamed all of the collapse of Nigeria on middlemen. According to him, some people were, in, were ordering food in order to embarrass his government. He took over, nationalized people's uh, properties and all of that. Last, last, Nigeria Naira collapsed to what continued to collapse to this day. But that's a story for another day. Okay. So let's go back to 1985. Right. As he said, it's open. So if we compare the Buhari's government to Babangida, we know that the difference is clear according to him. While one succeeded in instilling discipline in Nigerians, the other encouraged it. And institutionalized corruption is very right. Sashi Yi, you are very right about that. Babangida's government came to institu institutionalize corruption. So, you are right. I wonder why Colonel Abubakar Umar served Babangida's government for that long, seeing all that happened, the stealing, the looting, the killings, annulment of June 12, 1993 elections, and still has the moral, I mean, moral God to write to Obasanjo, leaving out Babangida. Well, this is my problem with uh, Umar. I will jump that. It was Joshua Dongoyaro who announced the coup, which was a blessing to the politicians. Some of Babangida's friends and one of, one of his very good friends, Aliyu Muhammad Guso, of course, MKU Abiola supported the coup because he fell out of favor with the Buhari Diagbon government. It was part of Buhari Diagbon government policy that the Oku Igboku newsprint company must be patronized and no newspaper publisher should import newsprint from overseas. MKU Abiola imported newsprint and they were seized by the Buhari Diagbon government. At the inception of the Buhari Diagbon government, a panel was set up to probe the rice importation scandal, and the person behind it turned out to be Aliyu Muhammad Guso, Shagari's director of military intelligence. This ended him retirement from the military. As the soon, I mean, as soon as Babangida came in, Guso was reinstated. It never happened before, Guso, and after him. The information that nailed Guso was released by Rafin Dadi, the Nigeria Security Organization Director, who took over from Umar Shinkafi under Shagari. Shinkafi, being aware of the plot to topple Shagari, and for some reasons known to him, tendered his resignation letter on health ground, but never entered Shagari of the plot. Rafin Dadi was then appointed. 
Rafin Dadi is a Daura man like Buari, and it was easy for them to plot the coup since they now have their man in national security, whatever, director. But Rafin Dadi paid for letting the information on Guso out. Guso, while under Shagari, had got a $1 million importation license for rice. And when Babangida came in, Rafin Dadi was arrested and detained for a long time. Hence, his appearance at the Oputa panel. Babangida and Guso knew what Rafin Dadi would have, would have revealed to the whole world. And that explained why they didn't show up. When he took over power in 1985, he withdrew the oversight function of the chief of army staff of the GOC to his office, that's Babangida, and made Abacha the chief of army staff. Abacha was just there, Abacha was just there without control on the GOCs. The GOCs were directly responsible to the head of state, Babangida. As soon as he took over power, Babangida opened up a debate on the political ideology Nigeria wanted. Money was spent, and the political bureau went around the country. Nigerians, according to public bureau, bureau, bureau's findings, wanted socialism. But Babangida said he was not ready to impose an ideal ideology on Nigerians. What about the IMF debate? We debated, and he said, no. But what we got was IMF through the back door in the name of a structural adjustment program. We have not recovered from the adjustments. It was adjustment from good to bad, wealth to penury, squalor. The man evil genius changed our lives. It became unlawful to serve in government without stealing. You must steal as a government official and no one will arrest you. It was Babangida who made the likes of Bola Akinyemi, Professor Bola Akinyemi, um, Bo, Bo, sorry, Bola Akinyemi. Professor Bola Akinyemi is closely related to Sonny Okogu, Mariam, Babangida's elder brother. Mariam Babangida's elder brother. In actual fact, Sonny Okogu once lived with Bola Akinyemi's father. It was through this that he met Babangida, which eventually gave him the NIIA job and eventually the Foreign Affairs Minister job. Mike Okai Aibe, the kingpin of the illegal bunkery mafia, also benefited from Babangida. Olabo De Georgi, the loudmouth of PDP, chairman of Nigerian Port Authority and vice chairman of PDP Southwest, also benefited from Babangida. Did he know anything about Bola Ige's death? Ask Atiku. It is a pity Sunday Afolabi is dead. We would have asked him too. Bola Ige's death. In 1986, after the alleged coup plot of Maman Vasta, Babangida began the demo demobilization of the Nigerian Air Force. He actually wanted to scrap it and merge it with airborne of Nigerian Army, but stopped for Ibrahim Alpha's sake. Ibrahim Alpha was the Chief of Air Staff and played a prominent role in the removal of Buhari and Idi Agbon. It was Alpha who went with Idi Agbon to Mecca on Arch. It was part of their plan to execute the coup when Idi Agbon would not be around. So at the Supreme Military, I mean, Military Council, uh, sorry, at the Supreme Military Council meeting, Alpha and others joined in voting Idi Agbon as the head of state, head of the federal government delegate to the Arch. And Alpha had to go with him to monitor him there. So Babangida had to respect him and left the Air Force untouched, but redundant. The Air Force personnel were only in uniform, but empty in terms of tools. This lasts up to Abacha's era. Babangida did it because of the fact that Maman Vasta and his group were alleged to have planned to use the Air Force to take over power in 1986. What happened to Nigerian educational system? What was, what was behind the introduction of the so-called 6334 education system? What role did Jubri Laminu play 
in Babangida's government. What about the April 20, 1990, 1990 revolution? Chief, I mean, Chief Obafemi Awolowo died in 1987. What killed him? They said heart attack. Is that true? On 26th of September 1992, Nigeria lost a generation of midriff officers in the C-130 plane crash. Who did it? What about the families of those who died in the crash? That is going to be uh, in the part three of this uh, chart now. Now, what I'm going to tell you is this. Let's take a break. I am still going to continue. I won't take calls. We still have uh, another uh, one hour to go. You can go and mix your own uh, drink as well. If you need to make uh, your uh, coffee, your tea. Uh, if you need to refill the, uh, the Jack Daniel or the whiskey, the brandy, whatever you are drinking. Go and refill so that when I come back, we will continue again. There is going to be a time for you to ask me questions or add anything to this. Tonight is for education. Like this video if you are still part of us. Like it, share it. I will be back in a minute or two or three. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for your uh, patience and uh, for spending your evening uh, with me. Now, let us continue reading about the owners of Nigeria by Sheyi Oduyela, a masterpiece, an historical masterpiece that can give you an idea into what went wrong, how they institutionalized all of this madness, and the reason why you should... Uh, Join hands to demand for the total dismantling of uh, this uh, fraud. Not for your own sake, but at least for the sake of your own children. Do it for them and they will thank you uh, when they are here. So let's continue. In October 1986, on a Sunday, two things happened to Africa and one particularly affected Nigeria. Samuel Michael, sorry, Samura Michael of Mozambique died in a plane crash. Delegiwa, the founding editor in chief of news magazine, Newswatch magazine, was killed through a letter bomb. It was a shock to us all. A new dimension into killing in the history of Nigeria was launched. Sadly, 
no one has been named officially for the killing. The reason is clear. We, we all know, we all know it. That the government killed Delegiwa. Which government? What do we mean by government? Not you, not me. We know the Nigerian government does not involve us, the masses. The government is personified in the leader. So where we say government, we mean Badamosi, Babangida. Will Florence Itagiwa serve under Babangida if he becomes Nigeria president? This was back in 2014, 24, 2004. This is so crystal clear. No individual in Nigeria had access to what was used to kill Delegiwa except the military. Giwa had received a call from Alilu Akilu that morning to confirm if he was in. We do not know why he was killed, but the rumor is that he had information on Gloria Okon. Gloria Okon was arrested by the Buari Diagbon government for drug trafficking. She was detained. And a few days later, the news came that she had died in detention of food poison. Who killed Gloria? We were waiting for that when Buhari was toppled. Well, some people benefited from the death of Delegiwa, the chairman of the board of directors of the magazine, Chief Alex Akinyele, became a minister under Babangida. It was said that Delegiwa had information on what actually happened to Gloria Okon. We do not know if this was the reason. Someone also died around that time, Dan Achibong military governor of Cross River State, under Babangida. It was reported that he died in a car accident on his way back to Cross River. He was in Lagos on the invitation of the military president, Babangida. We did not see the car that killed Achibong. Was he driving alone at the time of his accident? Was it a collision of two cars? A governor under the military, as we have, I mean, as we know, travel with escorts. But what happened to Ashibong? He got killed on the Gloria Okon related issue. Odeleke, husband of Bola Odeleke, the woman bishop, until his death was a colonel in the Nigerian army. He was in Abuja to attend a meeting summoned by President Papangida. What he later heard was that, while on short break, Odeleke, listen, what we later heard was that, while on short break, Odeleke was killed by a eat and run in a car in Abuja in a daylight. The eat and run driver was not arrested. But where did this happen? Who was there to know it was a hit and run driver? Someone must have been watching to see it happen. But who was that thought I? Why was his funeral rushed? They didn't even wait for his wife to see his remains before burial. Why the rush? They didn't want them to see that he was shot and not knocked down by a car, just as Ashibong was killed and arranged like an accident. While the killings go on, the military government of Babangida opened the way for advance fee fraud. He started the finance houses. Frosters to swindle Jews, so to, I mean, Frosters, I mean, sorry, Frosters to swindle Jews this. Forum group was won. Ade Bender, Fred Ajudua, Late Morris Ibekwe and others. On education, Jubri Lamenu was made the education minister and, was, and we had 6334 from the government. We also had nomadic education. According to the 6334 policy, we have six years of elementary education, elementary education, 
first three years of junior high school, second three years of senior high school, and the last four years for university education, no mention of polytechnic, I mean polytechnic or college of education. You spend more than five more than four years in polytechnic. Four, I mean, first two years for ordinary diploma, and you might decide not to go back for your higher national diploma. The College of Education has three years for Nigeria Certificate in Education, NCE. At that time, teacher's training college education was scrapped. Surprisingly, the scrapping took place in the South. It did not affect the North. I did my national youth service in, uh, in NYSC in the North, in Borono State. Buba Marua then, a lieutenant colonel, was the governor of uh, Borono State. In the North then, after the first three years in high school, students are transferred to teacher's college to complete their last three years in high school. They also have senior science secondary school, something that does not exist in the South. Though, their instructional, sorry, instructional laboratories were well equipped. There were no teachers to teach. They buy uniforms for their students, feed them, and even give them transport fare to go home and come back to school. It was a ploy to slow down our education in the South. 6334 was just a ruse. It has not showed any meaningful impact on the social economic development of Nigeria because it was not meant for that. Neither did the nomadic education made the northern nomads educated. I taught GSS 1 to 3 Christian religious knowledge, GSS 1 to 2 English language and economics and the SS1, I mean SS3 literature in English. This I did with BA honors, religious studies. My friend and roommate, a graduate of uh, biochemistry from the University of Illinois, now a medical director, taught chemistry, biology, and mathematics. We were not given any extra allowance for all of this. We lived in our 350 naira per month allowance. It was at Government Girls Secondary School, Gajigama, Borono State. The village had no electricity. We lived on generator for six hours daily from 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. It is on Baga Road, a few miles away from Lake Chad. Funny enough, that is where the NNPC depot is located, and it is just about one hour from Lake General Sonia Bacha's village. I want to say something about that. They put together an educational system eh, to slow down the education of these children of the South. One second. Listen to that, oh. You, one Nigerianist. You, uneducated one Nigerianist. They, they introduced 6334, form of education. The 6334 was to slow down the education of the people of Southern Nigeria. Meanwhile, in Northern Nigeria, that they thought they could put a program to encourage their children to go to school, they build schools there. Their laboratories are well equipped. So many people who have served there have said that. Yeah? But they have no teachers. So they now use the NYSC to get uh, the few educated ones from southern Nigeria to come and help them educate uh, their children in the north. But guess what? All the 6334 is a ruse. It's never meant to develop education in Nigeria. Neither the, the, the nomad education. That nomad education is that uh, they were giving them Western education and Quranic education. They were feeding them as far back as the uh, 1980s. So they were giving their children, they were giving them money so that they can come back to school tomorrow. While you and your parents in Southern Nigeria, they were suffering, suffering to send you to school to get educated. Suffering, suffering you through a system that is put together to limit your, your development, your growth intentionally. How can I forgive Nigeria? How? 
can I forgive Nigeria and forgive uh, those who the owners of Nigeria? How? They deliberately, because of where I come from. I did not beg anybody to give birth to me in southern Nigeria. I did not beg my parents to bomb me in Nigeria. We all came here and we figured out that uh, we are Yoruba, you are Igbo, you are Usa, you are Fulani. But you see, the owners of Nigeria, they are the they are the Mori Mori, the Yoruba called the Mori Mori Tum Mori or Motutun. They are the ones who are those who are shaping the destiny that many, many of us are dragging and struggling with today. But you don't know, do you? Of course, you don't know. They shaped us. How can I forgive Nigeria when the system deliberately, deliberately is put together to destroy me? You have one Nigeria, Abi, but you have two laws. You have one government. You have two rules. And the rule applies to you based on where you come from. And you are still want me to be jumping up and down and say, I'm one Nigeria, one Nigeria. Education, education, they say, is the best, uh, is the best uh, gift you are, and the best, uh, uh, what do you call it, the best support you can give, legacy you can give to a child. That's the best you can give to a child. Educate a child, and that child will feed himself, and he will feed the nation. So they deliberately destroy education that all of you are having in Yoruba land today. The same education they give birth to me into. The same education they gave to me. No wonder I was shouting uh, uh, in the name of our heroes pass. The names of the, the, the labor of our heroes pass shall never be in vain. So is this the labor of our heroes pass? Stop deceiving yourselves. Yo. They deliberately slows, slowed us down. But guess what? 30 years after that, rather than uh, for Northern Nigeria to match up, now terrorism take over. Uh, eh? Borono Baga, these are the Boko Haram territories now. Baga, if you are hearing about Baga in Borono, if you are hearing about this and that, you will now realize that uh, oh, more, last, last, they slowed us down. Listen to this. Oh. They killed the Biafrans just to keep Nigeria, to give us this Nigeria we have today. They change the education system of Nigeria to slow us down in southern Nigeria just to give us the Nigeria we have today. Last, last, eh? what exactly is the reason why they did all of this to us? If they are all going to keep us to in penury, in poverty, in fear, in terrorism. Come on, man. How can you say you are a proud Nigerian like that? If you know your history, you can never be proud of anything. Please give me a second. You can't be proud of something that is put together to ruin you, put together to destroy you, but you continue to shout the blood of Jesus, blood of Allah, uh, this and that. Allah, Allah, uh, if Allah wish. Allah does, it is not Allah's wish. It is not Jesus' wish. It is not, uh, it is not a God's wish. Whatever is going on in Nigeria is orchestrated. Some people put it that way. They institutionalized it. And you, all of me and you, we are the products of what they put together 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. And come on, man. If people now say that uh, yeah, nothing we can do about that, we are going to die like that. I mean, you have a right to say, no, I reject it. Don't just reject it. You have to fight it. And that's exactly what we are doing. And we, are not, uh, we are not sorry that we choose this than to continue to promote uh, one Nigeria. It is fraud. While it lasts, we will continue to tell every generation that don't waste your energy. Tifnubu and Gang and the rest of them, they are seeing Nigeria as a graveyard. Okay? They are like vultures. If you are smart enough, you will not waste your life. You will not waste another day calling for one Nigeria, one Nigeria, one Nigeria. You get that? Now, it's not a fast work as well. Orumila, Orumila, Orumila will show us the way. If you put your Orumila, if you put uh, Okwele and you check it and your Okwele is not telling you that they should break up Nigeria, you are a fraud. Oh, linear. But if you go anywhere, you see Babala will talk Bofa to Babala will that, uh, that Bofa, Yoron, Yoron. When they check anything, what they should, what the Oracle should be telling them is that uh, save my people, save my people, save my people. Oh, break up Nigeria and save life. Oh, break it up and save life. So that's what your Oracle should be saying. You know, if your Oracle cares, it doesn't matter. We care. And the Oracles care. Okay. But let us continue. It was a ruse. 
In 1987, Chief Obafemi Awolowo died. It was a shock to Nigerians, not because the death was untimely, not because he died at a tender age, but we were not expecting that the man would die so soon, even at his age. He was seen dead on the floor in his bathroom. What could kill Baba Awolowo? They said cardiac arrest. Give me a second. You see all these uh, spammers, all these, uh, hang on, sorry. All these spammers, they are, they are a bunch of uh, distractors, and I'm trying to like uh, get rid of them. But somehow, somehow, they are, my, they are managing to get back in. All these uh, spammers that are spamming this uh, broadcast, this crazy stuff, yeah. I don't know why. Okay, I'll find another means of getting rid of uh, that piece of shit, all right? So let's uh, go on. They said cardiac arrest. Is this true? The rumor then was that Pa Awolowo committed suicide after he was confronted by IBB on some findings. Well, okay, as rumor, let us say this is true, which can never be in any way. So, scratch that, right? But it's part of what, who, what could have killed Awolowo? How could Baba Awolowo end up uh, on the floor of his bathroom? And nobody noticed until uh, he collapsed and died. What happened? This is uh, a little bit of uh, what you should know, okay? Because it happened during Babangida. So what could have been the issue that Shifawolowo would have to take his own life for? The life he did not take during the treasonable felony trial. If he did not commit suicide, what killed him? It is known that one of his last visits was to Dodon Barracks. The landlord of Dodon Barracks entertained him. Did he drink tea like MK Wabiola? Okay. It was Babangida who created the concept of a new breed politicians. New breed politicians with the backings of old politicians. The late Musa Yaradua, Bola Ige, Adamusi Roma, and others were banned. Yaradua saw something in Atiku Abubaka and asked him to resign from the custom to customs to join politics. Atiku left customs in 1991 or thereabouts to become a new breed politician. Babangida asked the politicians to form political associations. They did, but he eventually gave them NRC and SDP. He wrote the constitution and provided money for them to run the parties. Our politicians without any iota of principle jumped at it. Since all they wanted was power, they do not care how they get it. They organized primary elections. Surprisingly, Yaradua won in the West, beating Falaye. Hmm. This feat was achieved with the help of the Amala and Begiri politician, Lamidi Adedibu, Babangida annulled it, banned them, and MK Wabiola came on board on the scene. Before this time, MKO Abiola never saw anything wrong in Babangida's goalpost shifting. He was Babangida's spokesman, appealing to Nigerians to bear with IBB and support him. Just like he, uh, Tifnumbu is begging all of you to understand Buhari and, uh, and uh, endure him and give him time. Until when they will serve him his own breakfast. Call on Mark by Nikokonua. Share you got with me. MKO, Abiola was their friend. I said the rest on Abiola till when I get there. I never believed Abiola will rule Nigeria. I had told my friends in 1993. They didn't believe me. We fought over this and I think they hold me apology now. All of you who are telling them that uh, Tifnumbu will never rule Nigeria. In another, 30, in another uh, 24 hours, the picture is going to be clearer. And then uh, your friends who are fighting you, they will have to come and apologize to you. Are you with me? Let's continue. On May 30, 1989, we, Nigerian university students, embarked on what was called SAP riots. 
but it was a peaceful demonstration to liberate ourselves from perpetual economic slavery of Babangida and his colonial masters. The then Benga Olawepo, Nance Piaro, and a student of University of Lagos was in, I mean, was in South Korea to represent Nigeria, stu Nigerian students at a world conference. Babangida had sent his SSS as Nigerian students, but the then Ola Wepo went and, represent and presented the true situation of Nigeria at the conference. We all saluted his courage then. This was embarrassing to Babangida, who declared Ola Wepo wanted. At that time, one second though. Yes, at that time, the universities were shot by Babangida for their involvement in the anti-SAP demonstration. The university were not opened until November 1989, from May 30, 1989. This actually marked the beginning of a regular academic calendar in our universities, and it also greatly affected the exchange program with foreign universities. Many professors left our universities, and things have not been the same since then. After their release, they came to UI, University of Ibadan, and we drove them around the campus in a coastal bus. I remember it was at night. Unfortunately, now it was waste. It was a waste. We have lost Bengali Olawepo. He is not dead, but politically, he is gone. Hmm. Hmm. I almost cried the day I saw Olawepo on, on NTA Tuesday live defending PDP and Obasanjo government. At first, I didn't believe it was the same Benga I had listened to all rallies in the 80s, passionately talking about our beloved country, Nigeria, can now align with the same people who jailed, maimed, and tortured him. This is a crazy world, though. But De Ojomu has also become a government contractor and a PDP member. Ojomu had been involved in student union activism from his days at the Oyo, at, at the Oyo State College of Arts and uh, Sciences. Then Benga Amolafe was the president and Bode was the speaker. But when they got to UI, they both changed positions. I will dwell more on this when I get to repositioning student movement. On this, I intend to trace the origin of the present crisis rocking the student uh, movement in Nigeria and make some suggestions. I could not believe my eyes the day I saw Bode Ojomu at the defense headquarters in Abuja. This was in 2000. He was there as a contractor and later discovered that he is a card-carrying member of PDP. I still salute Adewale Bashar and Benga Komalafe who stood firm on their ideology and did not falter. Today, like the Apostle, uh, like the Apostle Paul, Benga Olawepo, a former anti-Babangida, is now pro-Babangida. This is a tragedy. Again, make a do some touchings there. When you see people jumping up and down today, they know the solution to Nigeria. This country needed that. This, and you are jumping, you are queuing behind them and you are saying, these are the young, young people we need in Nigeria. You are gullible. And guess what? You will find out later that you are just a mere tool in their hands. Anybody championing one Nigeria, one Nigeria, one Nigeria, using all these flowery words and beautiful things they are saying, they are the future, they are the future contractor of Nigeria. They are those who are going to use you to make their own life better. Your children are going to be trapped in the contraption, just like you. Your parents, they lied to them. There were young, young people back then in the 80s, student union this and that. They turned out to be con government contractors. They now said, if you can't beat them, you have to join them. So you will be so gullible if you see anyone done that at the guy man or guy woman who is using your head fighting for one Nigeria. Let's say uh, we know of this problem. We all must come together because it's young. You are, you, are, you are stupid enough to believe them. Don't worry. When they finish with you and cash out from your own uh, situation, they will end up telling you that, Elmo, this Nigeria cannot change, Jerry. This Nigeria can never be better. 
they will do you, they will become governor, they will become this and that. Last, last, you are still going to be here asking, what is, what is wrong with Nigeria 20 years after, 30 years after? Don't believe any of them. You are only just the only machine. They, I mean, you are the only commodity they are selling. Break it up to save life. Anybody where they tell you, say Nigeria will work, uh, if all of us do this and that, if we try to do this, they are jobbing you. In 10 years' time, you will regret that you believe them. You will regret. It is very sad to see him drown out of uh, PDP in a disgrace. Well, it is very sad to see him thrown out of PDP in a disgraceful manner. Oba Sanjo, using Atifku as a small screen, expelled him from PDP. Olawepo, I don't know if he's still alive. Oh. Late, Asha, I mean, late, late Arimasha uh, and uh, Emmanuel Ibeshi were pro Oba Sanjo elements in PDP. But the plot was arched by Atifku. And with Obasanjo's approval, they were expelled without regard to court uh, re, re, you know, re, re, restraining them. We shall talk more on their expulsion and on the article in part five. In 1990, April 20, we woke up to another martial song. It was a revolution, not a coup. Contrary to general opinion, it succeeded, but they were not able to seize power. I said it succeeded because we all got manage, so we got we all got message of the proponent of this revolution. For the second time, we failed to yield to the color, I mean, to the wake up call. The first time was in 1967 when Odume Gojuku started the revolution. It was termed civil war, and Obasanjo is now claiming the glory of ending the war, leaving out the likes of Benjamin Adekunle and the important role Pa Awolowo played in ending the war, in quote. Ojuku started a revolution. We missed it. This writer is talking about another one that we missed again. In 1990, April 20, 1990. Yeah? Listen to this, oh. The second call came from Major Mukoro and his second Gideon, Gideon Oka paid with his life. Gideon Oka paid with his life. Rather than support them, we termed them tribalists. The, like, the likes of a general Oladipo Dia, then GOC, 82nd Mechanized Division in Enugu, came on here to condemn the revolution. Raji Rasaki, too, in Lagos, did not support it, though Ishaya Rizi Bamayi claimed the glory of stopping the, revol the revolt in Lagos. It was General Zidon Gandhi who actually deserved the glory. Zidon was in Ikeja government as a commander at that time. But because Zidon had problem expressing himself, all he said on that Sunday was, the dissident have been dislodged. This was turning point in Babangida's life. But for Sonny Abacha, Babangida would have been dead by now. What did Abacha do? He saved and aboard Babangida and his family on that Sunday night. Where was Babangida's deputy, Augustus Aikomo? Oh, he was in a boat holding a party with friends. Though the ECOWAS monitoring group, ECOMOG, was set up to give helping hands to fellow West African countries, but the genuine intention of the creator was to set to score with the 123 Brigade Battalion, Ikeja military cantonment, because of their alleged role in the April 20, 1990 revolution. They stayed in Liberia for two years and was later disbanded. The military under Babangida, according to his former chief of army staff, Saliu Ibrahim, was an anything goes military. Under Babangida, we had a military infected with corruption. This period produced a large number of military millionaires. Promotion and appointment were not done strictly on merit, but on godfatherism. Babangida's regime laid the foundation for what Nigerians later experienced under late Sonia Bacha. On September 26, 1992, another Sunday, 
over 168 midriff officers were killed in a plane crash at the Ejibo Swamp, Lagos. The officers were the 15th course of the senior division of the command and the staff college, Jaji. It was the first time in the world that a, a nation's military will lose such a number of officers in an accident in a day, not even a war in a war situation. I shall conclude Babangida in the next part and begin with MKO, Abiola. What was the link between Abiola and the military? What about the ITT, June 12th, and all that? That I will read again in the fourth part. Again, I'm going to take a break. Yes, I'm going to take a break. And if you have the time, you are still enjoying this. Eh? Remember, you two should take a break. Okay? Take a break and uh, like this broadcast. Share it again, okay? Invite your friends. Tell them those who should be here. And then, uh, you know, again, like the broadcast. And I will be back in a moment. <music> And thank you very much as well if you have uh, if you are still with me. This is going to be the final part uh, of the first part of this uh, kind of uh, you know broadcast. So if you are still here, I mean, come on, I am enjoying it, and I bet uh, that uh, for the educational uh, purposes, right, we can say it is uh, worth it. Okay, so like the broadcast, okay, like it, share it. It won't cost you anything. Okay, now this part is going to be the concluding part for tonight. And we're going to have the part two because this uh, write up, uh, this history is uh, stretched up to the part of 13. No, sorry, 11 rather, 11. So, because of our time, I'm going to continue. And thank you very much. If you have been very much, uh, uh, you know, uh, comfortable with uh, how we have done it uh, so far, like I said, tonight is not for us to begin to call them out yet, okay? Uh, tomorrow is another day where everybody is waiting for the big day. Kalu is warming up. Consensus candidate is cooking. That one is for another. No worries. It's for it's, it's for it's for the eve of uh, the uh, Kalu's uh, breakfast. But this one, you need this one. This is just to refresh your memory, refresh your mind. That there, there are other things you know, but this is also very important. Okay. Now let me let me go over that, and we can call it a night. Right. So when Babangida annulled the presidential primaries of SDP and NRC. It angered Yaradua. Sorry, one sec. And some other politicians. He also banned them from contesting. MKO Abiola did not see anything wrong in the annulment as it was an opportunity for him to contest. Helia, his late wife, Symbiat, had kicked against the idea of MKO going into politics. But after her death in late 1992, MKO Abiola saw the opportunity to fulfill his lifetime ambition, like Tifnumbu, of having both economic and political power. He joined SDP and no sooner 
like Obasanjo did in PDP, launched his political campaign for presidency. This did not receive the blessing of his former business partner, Shewu Musa Yaradua, Baba Gana Kinjibe. Once the national chairman of SDP, by the way, also indicated interest in presidency. This drew the eye of uh, Yaradua more than MKO. Yaradua, Abiola, Bamanga Tuko, and Raymond Dokwesi were partners in African Ocean Lines, a multi million dollar shipping uh, business. Tuko and Dokwesi are experienced hands in marine, while Yaradua, a lucky guy who retired as Major General at the age of 36, and Abiola contributed money. The business collapsed, and there was a rift between Abiola and Yaradua. But they still have a big bank. I saved the rest on MKO Abiola till when I get there. So eventually, we had the presidential election in, on 12th June 1993. It was between Tofa and Abiola. Tofa and Sylvester Ugo, his running mate, did not have voters card. As a result, they didn't vote on the election dates. After Babangida had shifted the dates from 1990 to 1993, in all, IBB spent $50 billion naira on a transition to nowhere. There was an unwritten agreement between Babangida and the Abacha that the former will hand over power to the later by 1990. This didn't work out and the late Abacha didn't like it. There were moves to stop the June 12 election. Author Inziribe went to court, got an injunction to stop the election through his Association for Better Nigeria, ABN, Professor Omo Omoruyi, in many of his uh, uh, press interviews also mentioned, a meeting with Babangida and Professor Humphrey Unwosu, the next chairman, where the idea of suspending the election came up. Babangida was strongly advised against it. Why would Babangida, the man with great vision and who meant well for Nigeria, want to postpone election? Babangida or any of his sponsored or unsolicited spokesperson should tell us. But what happened then was that some Nigerians knew before the announcement that election would be annulled and that there would be an interim government. General Olushe Gwamba Sanjo, late General Shewu Musa Yaradua, and Chief Tony Anene, the then national chairman of SDP, knew about the announcement. While this was on, Sonia Abacha was scheming too. Abacha's scheming and how Lieutenant General Dipo Dia was used as a pawn will be discussed when we get to Abacha. In 2000 or thereabouts, some Nigerians organized a conference in Jos, Plateau State. The organizers of this conference were Babangida's beneficiaries. Those IBB raised from nobody to somebody in the world of uh, looting and misgovernance. We have his former foreign affairs minister, former apostle of SAP, former district officer, military governors, and many other contractors without offices in attendance. Their agenda was to take over power. This, in actual fact, created panic in us old rock. Then Obasanjo and Babangida were having some misunderstandings on someone who, Turakin Adamawa, Alaji, Abubaka, Atiku. I am not going to talk about why now. I'm not going to talk about why now. Okay? According to this writer. But I will talk about this. I will talk about the moves. IBB and the outcome of the Just Conference. Was the move to impeach Obasanjo part of it? No. Who wanted Obasanjo removed? The latter, Atifku. After the coup that removed Chief Sunday Awoni Bamanga Tuko, Chief, uh, Chief Ume Ezeoke, late Arimacha, Emmanuel Ibechi, and Benga Olawepo from PDP, there were, there were moves to form political association to fight PDP, National Frontier, blah, 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 blah. Not really interested in that, right? But their plan was to form many associations, make one vocal and distance the rest from IBB. 
UNDP became very vocal, was very critical of Obasanjo's government before this. IBB group attempted an alliance with the uh, National Frontier, but it did not work out. And Kenny Martins was used to divide National Front. National Front was divided and Awoniyi withdrew. That was a very strong strategy to get rid of uh, potential threats. After the exit of Awoniyi, they took over National Front and formed, I mean, and fused it to UNDP. Aikomu led another group to APP and they took over APP. These are Babangida boys here. Yeah. They took over APP and they took, I'm sorry, and changed it to ANPP. This was revealed by one of IBB's allies in Ibadan. According to him, they will create a decoy for Obasanjo. NDP is another IBB association. They had attempted to use the Garulos Pastor Chris Okotie as a Southwest uh, presidential candidate. Okotie had gathered journalists in his church for support and to block negative publicity in the media. While it lasted, he was receiving briefing from, Ma from Mina, from Babangida. He was able to pocket a number of uh, media editors, but he was dropped after some considerations. The concert at the National Stadium was sponsored from Mina. They also promised uh, him that uh, his famous broadcast on AIT will be translated into Arabic and Aousa and heard in the north. He was to go to Kano for another show when the drum beat changed. He did not know that. He did not know until the night of the long knife at the International Conference Center Abuja when lost when uh, when he lost uh, to uh, Ike Nwachuku. But the bottom line is this, the footnote. Between ends of 2001 and 2002, Mr. Fixit Tanini was mentioned. I don't want to go into that. Why it is not in my character, this is the writer as well, right? This is not an attempt to attack any individual, blah, blah, blah. Me, I want to attack individual if uh, I have any space there. So I'm not touching that. Uh, on Babangida again, which is a wrap-up, is that uh, Babangida meant well and he had their visions according to them, yes. He meant well for himself and had vision for himself. He created direct, directorate of a road and rural infra, infrastructure, mass mobilization for self-reliance, People's Bank. Where did all this end? They were avenues of stealing, conduit pipes for looting. We have also been making mistakes judging the successes of some government as good because of the involvement of some personalities. Most of these personalities we found to be inconsistent. They say one thing today and they do another tomorrow. That late that I mean sorry, that late Taisho Lani served in People's Bank does not give Babangida's government credence. He brought the likes of Esho Lani in to humiliate them, which he did. Taisho Lani was appointed chairman of People's Bank without fund to run the bank and with no power. Taesho Lani, after quitting, tendered apology. He admitted he made a mistake. Taesho Lani once vowed never to wear Agbada. Who once said that it only is, is only a lazy man that wears Agbada? But Taesho Lani wore Agbada as the chairman of People's Bank. It was just to humiliate them. Every Yoruba man that is telling you about one Nigeria, every Yoruba man that is pushing that Nigeria is going to work, every Yoruba man that is telling you that he is building an alliance, he is building bridges with the Igbos, he is building bridges with the Ausa Fulani, he is building bridges here and there, and upon all the bridges, he, now to make Nigeria work, he, raw, no. We'll continue this some other time, okay? Our time is uh, up, and I want to give my uh, closing now, okay? When politicians tell you that uh, they are doing it for you, they are building relationship. Uh, I have met with all the people in the north. I have met with the people in the east. Nigeria is going to be a great country. We must work together. Raw no. You hear me? Raw no. Nobody, whether Naousa, Yoruba, Igbo, any one of them that faces you and tell you that uh, they have new solution to Nigeria. Raw no. Now your destiny, they won't take uh, they won't take gamble. So 
There is nothing they tell you today they didn't tell your parents. Oh. There is nothing they are going to tell you today eh, or promise you that they didn't promise your grandparents. Oh. Last, last, see. Now everybody chop breakfast, see. Look at, eh, you know what I mean now? Look at how and where and where we are today. Ron, oh, Tifnumbu said, is coming to come and give your children this and that see, when he become president of Nigeria. Run, oh. Pastor Ruga once told you that uh, uh, once he become vice president and fake uh, uh, Bokwari become president, all they needed was just uh, to what? To be to come to power. Your children will have a better school. They will have better funding. Your, your children who are graduate will have jobs. Uh, infrastructure will be imp uh, improved. You have a security, including state policy. Oshibaju has been vice president for the, for the last seven years. What are they going to tell you about Nigeria again? Raw, no. I they tell you now, raw, no. Anything they say to you right now, nothing they will say now that they haven't said before. I have read this history to you. If you are just joining me, take your time and listen to this. Whatever they tell you, anything. Once they begin to talk to talk and say one thing, one beautiful Nigeria, Nigeria is a great place. Uh, the next leader of Nigeria must learn how to bring Nigeria together. We must say all those things. He talk, talk, Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria. Raw, no. Because some of us have to say you run when you heard this that time. We for John, maybe for better pass as it be now. Raw, no. We will work with you to build a Nigeria that is not corrupt. I bring you a message of hope. We are going to send a lot of resources on education. God bless you. So thank you very much, everyone who spent their time with me tonight. I have dropped my piece. Like I said from the beginning, I am not doing this for you to like me. Okay? I appreciate everybody who loves my who likes me, who supports me. They will always be there for me. So, And I don't take them for granted. So you don't hold me any like. But if you value your life, if you value your future, or even if you don't care, at least value if you have been procreating, I mean procreating, if you have children, value them, value what the life they will live. Are you going to leave them in this uh, Nigeria the way it's going? You lie to yourselves. Do you want to also lie to your children? The reality is different from all the other nonsense that some of you are projecting, promoting, and all of that. Nigeria, Nigeria. Tell yourselves the truth. Break it up to save lives. Okay? And that's it. And thank you. Once again, for your time, I am going to see you some other time. Don't leave without dropping your offerings as usual, okay? Tomorrow night, eh? Or maybe tomorrow afternoon. Breaking news as usual. We will monitor them and follow them bomber to bomber. Share so we for those as they are as, as they have uh, they have been hell bent in trying to continue to ruin us, making us wait and wait until we are old and die. Then our children will have to face this as well until they are old and die. We will say enough now, okay? From tomorrow, bomber to bomber. I'll see you some other time. You should have a good evening.